Okay, so we're going to spend a couple of classes talking about these concepts of molarity and molality. Um, this is a calculation-based way of determining, you know, a numerical value for concentration of a solution. Um, so in this recording, just focus on making sure you kind of know the definitions of these, uh, the equation to solve for them, the units, just some basics related to it, and we'll work on more complicated calculations together in class next time. Um, so here is a table that you can use to take some good notes, kind of get all of those basic information down. Um, so just focusing on the left column for molarity, all right, I guess, actually I want to start in the both column first. All right, so both of these really can be defined as ways of quantifying concentration. You just do it in slightly different ways. All right, so that's something they have in common. These are both ways to communicate how concentrated a solution is, if it's dilute, if it's close to saturated, that sort of thing. Um, this part here is something to keep in mind, and we'll talk about this briefly today, but this is gonna be our major focus tomorrow, uh, is that because both of these are ways of calculating concentration, you need to know how many moles of the substance you have. So you gotta think back to chemistry A and how we kind of determine that. So we're gonna review how to, con how to convert from mass to moles using the molar mass. So that's something that you may need to use for both of these. Molarity, all right, so these terms are unfortunately really, really similar. So make sure you write this down. You have a way to keep this straight in your head. But molarity is the number of moles in one liter of solution. So to calculate it, you take your moles of your solute and do you divide it by the volume in liters of your solvent. All right, so the equation is moles over volume. All right, so just an example of what this looks like when you write it out. All right, you're gonna, there's a few things you have to communicate when you give this. First off is the number, the value you get from dividing the moles by the volume. All right, and then you're gonna communicate that this is a molarity concentration by putting a capital M afterwards. And then you also need to communicate what chemical you actually just calculated the concentration for. All right, so and that's the, the HCl afterwards. So what this is is that in if you had one liter of this particular substance, there would be 4.5 moles of hydrochloric acid in there. All right, so that's kind of what that's saying. So the unit for molarity is a capital M. Now, molality, on the other hand, is the number of moles per kilogram of solution. All right, so that's the major difference here is what you're, how you're kind of measuring that solvent. So for this, you're gonna do your moles of solute divided by the mass in kilograms of your solvent. So this is gonna be moles divided by mass. All right, now the trick is, remember that this is the mass of your, so for both of these, it's the volume or the mass of just your solvent. All right, and then the moles, are always of your solute. Okay, so the way of writing this out in a numerical fashion is similar to molarity, except you use the molality unit, which is a lowercase m. All right, and the reason why we aren't going to confuse this with meters is because whenever you write a concentration, you have to include that chemical in there. We don't measure chemicals in length. So if you see lowercase m followed by some sort of chemical formula, then that's you, then you know that it's a molality calculation. So that's important that you include the unit and the chemical abbreviation when you're writing out these values. So take some time, make sure you have this written down. But just to kind of give you a basic idea of your calculations, all right, so these are some very just straightforward, simple problems that aren't meant to be confusing by any means. 
All right, so it says, what's the molarity when you add 4.7 moles of sodium chloride to 5.0 liters of water? All right, so I'm just going to identify what I know. All right, I know I have 4.7 moles. All right, so that's going to be my moles. I know I have 5.0 liters of water, so that's going to be my volume. All right, and I need to calculate molarity. So that's where I take my moles and I divide by my volume. So it's going to be 4.7 divided by 5. And let me grab a calculator real quick. It's going to be something slightly less than 1. Or 0 0.94. All right, and then I need to attach some units and a symbol on here. It's molarity, so that's going to be a capital M, and then it's sodium chloride. All right, so just simple, basic. You know, this is as straightforward as they will be. Um, we'll talk about more complicated variations on this tomorrow. But let's do the other one. So this next one, what is the molality? of 2.5 kilograms of water that contains 3.4 moles of KOH. All right, so here I've got my mass of water, and it's in kilograms, which is good. If it wasn't in kilograms, we would have to convert, just like if the volume is in liters, you have to convert to liters. So we'll talk about that tomorrow too. And then here I've got my moles. So for molality, that's going to be moles over mass. So that's going to be 3.4 divided by 2.5. So this one's going to be bigger than 1. So it's going to be 1.36 little m, because molality is little m. And then I, so that I don't think I'm giving a length, I need that KOH afterwards indicating what chemical is at this 1.36 concentration. All right. So just to kind of preview a more complicated problem, this is something that requires you to figure out the moles. It's not given directly to you. So if you have 450 grams of lead chloride dissolved in 0 0.45 liters of water, what is the molarity? All right, so we need to be able to take this number and convert that into moles. So this requires some memory from Unit 6 of Chemistry A. I'm using the molar mass to do that. So just in case that's not fresh in your mind and you don't remember how to do that, I've attached an extra recording as a review. Uh, so check that out before class tomorrow. And we will talk more complicated problems, how to solve this one, what to do if you're not given kilograms or liters as far as your mass or your volume, um, and practice those sorts of things together.